No doubt there is a ton of pressure for Modern Warfare 2, or what is presumed to be called Modern Warfare 2, coming later this year. In the last two years of statistical decline in sales, retention, whatever metric you want to bring up, Vanguard and Cold War haven't even come close to eclipsing the accomplishments of Modern Warfare 2019. Not to mention the current rumor that Modern Warfare 2 will be the first two-year game in the franchise's modern history, so there's a lot at stake here. Today, I wanted to have a casual Monday conversation to start out the week on what I think are some big things that need to be avoided for this coming year year of content on deck. What some could say, things that could ruin Modern Warfare 2, and some things that we can hopefully see avoided. So, that said, drop your thoughts down below. By no means is this a definitive list. It's entirely subjective. Just wanted to throw my thoughts out here for you guys, and if you agree with some of these, cool. If you don't, totally fine. But feel free to drop your thoughts on what you'd like to see avoided with Modern Warfare 2 here, what you think needs to be done in order to make this the best year yet. Whatever the case, feel free to drop it down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button instead with all things COD 2022, perhaps even if it is called Modern Warfare 2 and anything Call of Duty related. If you're interested in joining the community and staying up to date with all of it, I'd love to have you. And finally, remember, if you guys are ever interested in supporting the channel a little further, creator code ESPRESSO in the in-game shop is a phenomenal but entirely optional way to do so. Don't ever feel pressured to, but that said, let's jump into it. Number one up on this list today is probably one of the most obvious things here out of this, but we can't have Modern Warfare 2 missing out on a full, complete game offering. Right at launch, we need to have the full thing. A full campaign, full MP offering of a healthy number of weapons, modes, maps, you name it. And also a full third mode that isn't broken like Spec Ops was whenever that launched. Now, honestly, I think that's probably one of the biggest downfalls of the recent Call of Duty games. I mean, Cold War had, what, like 9 MP maps to start at launch. It had a slow start to the zombie season as well. The campaign was solid, I thought, but realistically, that was something that turned players off from the very beginning. And then Vanguard, it was marketed to have the most MP maps that we've seen in recent launches, which is true. It is something that definitely was nice to have that amount of offering for playable maps right out of the gate with Vanguard, but that's where, if you try and play anything else, you can kind of see where that's where most of the dev time I'd wager went into. Vanguard's campaign was in my books one of the most hollow campaigns that we've had in ages and that really hurts me to say because I've loved the storytelling of Sledge's games in the past but when the main storyline progresses in two total missions out of like a five to six hour campaign the missions really didn't have any significance and seemed just built out to give you something to do to kill that time. In Vanguard Zombies well do we really need to go on from this one? I mean, minimal support from day one, no pause feature, no pack-a-punch until season two, no traditional zombies experience outside of three-round burst gameplay that came two and a half months after launch, and it's something you have to reboot every single time you complete those three rounds, no real Easter eggs, and so on and so forth. So that's something that Modern Warfare 2 needs that full offering from the very beginning, and in order to avoid dropping the ball early, we hopefully won't be seeing those gaps in gameplay where there's something for everybody. And following that up, at number two, potentially one of the things that could be detrimental for a Modern Warfare 2 is a lack of post-launch support. And the thing that I really look towards is kind of Vanguard right now. And I kind of target Vanguard because we've seen the least amount of content offering for, say, traditional multiplayer and the traditional game out of Season 1 and Season 2 so far out of any of the other Call of Duty games in recent years. Season 1 only introduced us to two multiplayer maps. We thought that maybe we'd get a third one with a mid-season update, but we really didn't even get a mid-season update, if you want to call it that. We had an update at mid-season, but it wasn't a reloaded update like we'd been used to in Black Ops Cold War's main year of support, as with Modern Warfare 2019's main year of support. Season 2 has only introduced us to two maps so far, so there needs to be more of that. Fortunately, it does seem like we're getting those rumored Modern Warfare 2 remastered multiplayer maps in the mix to round out more content, so, I mean, I'd be totally cool with that if we can get back to our traditional three to four maps per season again, and then with additional remastered maps in the mix, making for maybe five to six maps per season, that might be wishful thinking, but that would be solid. But a lack of content is definitely something that needs to be avoided in order for Modern Warfare 2 to thrive. Another mistake that needs to be avoided is a lack of engaging and worthwhile content here in the upcoming year. That's something that honestly, I don't really have too much of an overwhelming concern about this right now, looking at where Modern Warfare 2019 came from and what we may be able to see. Similar in Modern Warfare 2. The only real concerns come out of the last two years of content, but Modern Warfare 2019 had a decent bit. They had Gold, Platinum, Damascus, missions for rewards across MP, Spec Ops, and even Warzone for a little bit. You had Obsidian Camo introduced a little later on to give you something additional to grind to. You had Mastery Challenges that allowed you to complete challenges for every single weapon that offered unique rewards for each weapon, and then an overall completionist reward, which honestly I'd wager probably like less than 1% of players have. That's how intense it was. But Vanguard and Black Ops Cold War didn't introduce a lot of that. Talking from my own experience here, who's part of playing the game is tethered to their job. 
I completed Atomic and I haven't gone back and played Vanguard outside of leveling up the new weapons introduced since then because there's no real reason to. I mean, there's nothing that keeps me there. There's nothing that's like, that's going to be worthwhile. It's going to keep me engaged over a long period of time. There's no mastery challenge, no obsidian camo, no sort of weekly challenges that offer up a unique reward after X amount of completions. What are the case? that doesn't offer a whole ton. So one of the things Modern Warfare 2019 did right was by keeping that. And sure, I absolutely agree there could have been more, but by definition of the last couple of years, it kind of puts those to shame. So I would very much so hope that we can avoid this sort of problem we've seen in the last two years and get back to Modern Warfare 2019 on track, but also offering even more to do. Now, outside of that, other things that could ruin the Modern Warfare 2 gameplay experience is stupid design decisions. And this is where we could talk all day and night about some of the things for Modern Warfare 2019. Now, here's the thing. I will absolutely champion for the storyline, the things that are offered in terms of free DLC, the attempt to bring Call of Duty back into a household name in gaming once again via the way of not only just Modern Warfare 2019 and that nostalgia, but also Warzone being free to play. But while I love so much of what that game offered, I will never deny that there are dozens of things that I hated about that gameplay experience. Probably the big three, though, when it comes to design decisions for me was Ghost, where it protected players even if they were not moving. It incentivized camping, perhaps, in that regard. Dead Silence being a field upgrade, that was something that changed the multiplayer experience drastically, though I totally understand afterwards why that was done, because it was directly correlated to Warzone. Dead Silence is a perk in Warzone would be a huge crutch, but still, if you can separate those two, I think that you should. The minimap handling was absolutely something that I never quite understood, why it was only the classic minimap in Ground War, also in Warzone, but why the MP experience had to have something different and entirely changed that nobody wanted. That kind of stuff, if we can avoid those, you're going to save face for a lot in that regard and also have a lot happier of a player base if you can do that kind of stuff. Kind of expanding upon some gameplay decisions here, that's something that I think that the TTK could be something that could be a downfall of Modern Warfare 2 this year. Call of Duty being a Twitch shooter is absolutely something that goes into the arcade style of play that's been around for the entirety of the modern Call of Duty era. COD 4 kind of grandfathering that, but when you take a look at Modern Warfare 2019, when you take a look at Vanguard, those TTKs are so absurd fast that it really does take the term of twitch shooter to an entirely different level black ops cold war of course had some outplayability where you could end up taking a shot and then turning on a player and taking them out whereas they thought they may have had a free kill on you but if you try to do that in modern warfare 2019 or vanguard chances are you're not going to now, I like to think that the recent additions of the higher TTK mode in Vanguard, plus the additional adjustments in Vanguard Royale, adding 50 more base health, make for some foreshadowing that maybe a change could be coming, that they're open to playing with this idea and maybe increasing it in the future, especially if we're going to be seeing this new Modern Warfare engine be the sort of baseline for most games going forward, with creative variants being introduced in every single title, but that's something that, fingers crossed, could actually result in maybe something of a slower TTK here for Modern Warfare 2. Now, Talking about something that could be too slow being problematic is something that is next up on deck. Weapon leveling. Now, here's the thing. I know that weapon leveling is a big integral part of, say, the mastery camo grind, and that's something that, from a design intent, you want to make it something that's substantial. But at the same time, when you look at Vanguard, the unfortunate part is that so many people do not have the time of the day to grind out the weapons that they want to. It takes them way too long just to do one singular weapon. And so therefore you have things like people using the same weapons over and over, or they don't even attempt that long standing grind of atomic camo just because it's not worth it to them. So one big problem that Modern Warfare has here in terms of its weapon leveling is finding that balance between making it something that's worthwhile and longer, but also something that isn't too long that it turns players off to even wanting to try it. Perhaps if you have more weapons with a lower max level, maybe that helps to alleviate things. I'm not quite sure, but it's absolutely something from fundamental design approach is a challenge here that could hurt the long term of the game here. Now, next up, another thing that could be detrimental to the multiplayer experience is one of my least favorite things from the multiplayer experience of Modern Warfare 2019, squad spawning and other poor spawn logic. Now, squad spawning is something that tried to facilitate spawns near or on your squad mates in match. Now, that was something that was a little bit more apparent within Ground War because you could actually choose to spawn on top of your squad mate like you could within Battlefield. But the traditional multiplayer experience also utilized some of that spawn logic to spawn you around players that were in the vicinity. Vicinity. And so therefore, it wasn't something that had some fixed spawns, and then it also made for a more clustered spawning experience. It wasn't something that you could have predictable spawns where, okay, I know if they're blocking this spawn,
spawn point, I'll flip to a different spawn and I'll have a little bit of time to react at least. It wasn't always guaranteed to be like that. So to me, they need to get rid of that and entirely just forget that ever happened. And finally, talking about the gameplay itself, the gameplay experience with this, one thing that I think absolutely can hurt Modern Warfare 2 long term is skill-based matchmaking. Now, we all know it. We all have talked about it. It is something that in recent years, it seems to have transformed from pure skill-based matchmaking to something that's a retention-based matchmaking system that honestly, I think is way more predatory. It knows your habits of gaming when you're about to get off. It feeds you better lobbies to keep you from getting off and then will let you be stomped at the other times. So it really is this roller coaster of playing your emotions, which is pretty messed up if you ask me. But it is something that according to Ralph's Valve Insider here that we've talked about on the channel, Demonware, the matchmaking studio here behind Call of Duty has apparently been playing around with a new system that's been an R&D for quite some time that should hopefully be a little bit more relaxed for those higher caliber of players for that higher 1% that may experience this way more often than others. For those that may be in the bottom 50%, firstly, statistically speaking, you're likely not here on this video. The people that care more about this game are the ones that are going to go out of their way to watch videos on Call of Duty to learn more about it. The people that don't mind this kind of stuff at all are the weekend warriors. They'll play one or two matches every week, perhaps. So likely not you or I, but it is something that the effects of skill base can absolutely be seen by you or I. So to see that relaxed, I'm hopeful that actually does hold up. And that would be a big win, I think, if we see that relaxed and not as strict in matchmaking coming for this upcoming year. The final two things that I want to talk about that I think could hurt Modern Warfare 2 long term. One is gimmicks. This can come down to really anything, whether you see it as like weapon charms and stickers or for me personally, I think one of the gimmicks with Vanguard was the MVP screen. It's a cool feature in theory, but out Adding another 20 to 30 seconds on to being able to jump into another match that novelty starts to wear on you pretty quickly and it's something that you can't even back out of it so it's not optional so you get stuck on it immediately as that game timer or score counter ends up hitting the max level or counting down to zero and so I could totally do without that. I think a lot of people are like that as well. And the final thing here is one that was kind of rounding out this list, but it's one that for my friends in the comp scene, I really hope this is something that isn't passed up again. I really hope that we end up getting a ranked mode at launch. I think a lack of anything with ranked support at launch could definitely hurt the game here, especially being that there's going to be two years of this game if that rumor holds up. And for a competitive scene, well, the support at launch hasn't been there since Black Ops 3, and that's something that causes a stir every single year. This year, probably the most out of what I've seen recently, so fingers crossed that kicks things into gear and maybe we get an actual ranked mode and some competitive support right out of the gate. But anyways, that's my 10 things that I think could potentially add to the ruin of Modern Warfare 2 here and things that hopefully get avoided. I want to see this game be the best that it possibly can be. I'm sure that you do as well. But that said, that's going to wrap it up. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you guys agree with this list? Disagree with it? Maybe think that there's something that I may have missed that was glaring? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2, Call of Duty related, anything COD we got you here on the channel. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button. That said, thanks so much for watching. Modest Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.